Welcome to the Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast, where you get multifamily investing made real. Learn from top players in the real estate investment world as they share their secrets with you and discover proven strategies on apartment investing that actually work. To learn more about Wheelbarrow Profits, visit jakeandgino.com, your one-stop shop for everything multifamily. Now to your hosts, Jake and Gino. Hello, everybody. This is Jake Stenziano, host of the Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast, here with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, the chef, the father of six, the best-selling author, the G-Dad, Gino Barbaro. Gino, how's it going? Mr. Stenziano, doing good. This is uh, Christmas week. I want to wish you and Bill a Merry Christmas this week, and uh, looking forward to a great show. Ho, ho, yeah. Ho. Merry Christmas, old man. Today's <laughs> guest is Bill Manicero. Bill is the founder of Old Dogs REI Network and the host of the Old Dogs Podcast. Both ventures are geared at helping older real estate investors create cash flow and wealth for their families. So without further ado, welcome him back. Bill, how's it going? Hey, buongiorno, paisanos, huh? Hey, how we doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. Doing great. Good. Good to see you guys. Smiling, cheerful. You know, uh, is it cold back there at all? Uh, no. it's, tw- it's 25 degrees. We got snow this weekend. It's just like, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a California guy, to be honest with you, but I'm stuck here in New York. <laughs> uh, well, I, I love the snow. You know, it's fun to go and ski and <laughs> do that kind of stuff and hang out. Uh, how, how about you, Jake? Uh, how's it down in uh, Tennessee? You know, it's um, it's a little chilly. Not really, uh, not really feeling it right now. But you know, we got we got basically half of December, January, and February, and then it's uh, then it starts to pull back around. So I can live with it a lot better than when I lived in New York. So, so basically, oh. we got the two wimps on the East Coast, right? That's what we got here. And these two guys on the East Coast complaining about the weather. So, you know. I love it. Anyways, well, Bill, it's been a little while since we last spoke. Can you just just for the listeners tell a little bit about your story, what you're doing? with your organization, Child Hope International, and basically why you created Old Dogs, what you're doing with that, and and just a little background for everybody. Okay, sure. Um, I basically, uh, you know, uh, last 11 years have been in uh, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Uh, We have a nonprofit called Child Hope International that focuses on uh, 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 orphaned, abandoned, at-risk children, uh, mostly street kids in in Haiti, and uh, living there with my family. Um, as uh, started there, you know, a younger man, and uh, as time went on, you know, it's it's a, just a tough place to live. It's a pretty pretty gnarly. Uh, you know, I've uh, had my There's whole that family's California head coming out. Oh yeah, gnarly baby. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, just, you, you don't hang too loose in Haiti. <laughs> <man>. uh, <laughs> But uh, it's you know it was I was just you know starting to think oh my gosh you know I'm getting older it's it's a it's a little rough you know my kids are growing up they're going back to the states um, and we're you know we had set up our organization initially to be run by Haitians anyway so we we you know got it all ready it was you know I was uh, about you know about fifty nine sixty and and I'm going man you know I, I don't have a plan here you know I mean I've kind of lived on faith for so long I was you know I had a little money in IRA you know from my corporate days and. But I, I just was not uh, not really prepared, so I started looking at what could I do, you know, because I'm not going to have enough to really, you know, get through retirement and so forth. So um, I started looking at all kinds of different avenues. I looked at online marketing. I started a little online business while I was in Haiti, uh, you know, doing really good. And then I got kicked off of eBay, and so my whole model just fell apart. Why did you get <laughs> so, kicked off eBay for, man? <laughs> well, it's one of these things where you know there's there's not really any kind of real drop shipping. I mean, they are. You, you know, you're basically buying things on Amazon and selling them on eBay type deal. And uh, and and when my suppliers would run out, you know, unfortunately, I have to go to the people I sold to and say, "You look, I'm sorry, we're out of that item." Do you want to? And then you just get a couple of bad reports. Yeah. Yeah. And and you're like off eBay for life. I mean, there's no contending it and stuff. Banned from eBay and went to real estate. Here we go. I know. I know. And and then Miraculous, I got this check in the mail, uh, a, a inheritance check, and um, I had been involved in the stock market for a while, and, and I just didn't feel real comfortable going into the stock market. And uh, with the money, I just you know thought, well, what am I going to do with it? I need to invest it. So I started doing research, checked into uh, real estate, said, this is great. I got a lot of friends that are doing well in real estate. So <laughs> That's basically how I got started. I, I, I hopped on a plane from Port-au-Prince. Uh, first, I went to Atlanta, bought a, a single-family home there. Uh, then I flew to Memphis. I bought a single-family and a duplex there. 
and uh, flew back home, you know, all within about a week's period. And, uh, you know, I was, a, you know, I had my, my investments, my real estate investments. And I really initially just thought of it as, an, you know, just, just another means like the stock market, you know, just a place to put your money and you just kind of sit back. And, and, you know, the next month I started getting checks and I'm going, well, this is pretty sweet. You know, this is like, I didn't do anything, you know, and then it just keeps coming. I'm going, this is why, why can't I grow this? And then, you know, it, it'll, be a means by which I can provide not only for my wife and I and, and help out my kids as they're growing up and so forth, but, uh, you know, also as a way to eventually be able to help support what we're doing in Haiti. So that was it. That's how it got started. And as I did it, I had friends like I'm sure you guys did when you got started that are asking you, Hey, you know, what are you doing? You got that, you bought that property there, that, what have you. And, uh, so no, I in the sharing. beginning they said, what the hell are you doing? And then it took a few months before work before they asked, what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, that's true too. A few? The, fam- the family side. That's you know, right. And I go, what the hell? That's right. You know, so, so I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to them, a bunch of people I'm, I'm meeting with and so forth. And I, so, so I figured, well, why don't I do a blog or something? It'd be kind of easier to kind of communicate with people. I can share the stories of things that are happening. And it kind of grew into this old dogs REI network because I just – and a lot of people my age and older – that you know they're baby boomers. They they have you know either approaching retirement or they're in retirement, and they're just kind of looking at this, going, "Wow, you know, what am I going to do? I don't, I'm not going to have enough money, and uh, Social Security may go away, and all these other issues." And so I just kind of geared it to that that group, and it evolved into a podcast. And then uh, that that's what I've been doing, basically sharing my story. I you know I interview people like you guys do, uh, and but I also have a uh, you know, share my, you know, my, the good, bad, and the ugly of real estate investing with everybody. I'm real open about it too. And, uh, <laughs> but you know, that's how we learn, right? <laughs> so, so that's it. That's pretty much how I how got started and is going crazy right now. So Bill, can you take me back to the time when your kids were growing up in Haiti? How, how was it like for them as opposed to living in the States? It's a very different, you know, I, I have seven kids, uh, you know, one more than you, Gina, you know, just, uh, but, uh, all right. What is trying, everybody man. that comes on the show? Know. They got like, they got like all these kids, man. It's crazy. It's I'm like trying, something Jake. In real one estate, more. Multifamully and kids. Uh, Gina, Gina's competing with their other real estate podcasters for most kids. You're still young, Jake. You know, you got lots of time, you know. Right. Yeah, I keep telling that. We, we, got, we got one and we're busted out of our house. And it's not really, it's not a small house, but it means it's like, it's just the stuff keeps coming in. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, so yeah, we, we moved over there. We basically sold everything. We just totally took a leap of faith and went there. had no idea what I was doing, you know, kind of like the way I started real estate and uh, just kind of, you know, my kids were young. I had one that was, uh, see, I had four. I had another one that was like uh, nine, another one that's 12. And then I had, uh, uh, my older kids, uh, that started off with us too. And, um, and so they were really young. They, they really grew up there. You know, my, my, uh, my kids, uh, we, and then we ended up adopting two in Haiti as well, uh, oh, two oh, Haitian, awesome. Haitian boy and a Haitian girl. So, uh, that's, that's how we kind of got it. Went from five to seven pretty quickly. And, uh, uh, they, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. You know, all my kids had malaria, you know, they've all, you know, uh, my wife and I have both had malaria and dengue. I had them both at the same time. Um, we had, we've had kidnapping attempts, you know, we've been in the middle of hurricanes, uh, the major earthquake that was out there. Um, it's, it's an adventure. Haiti's kind of like the wild wild west. and, And get this thing, you know, out to Hollywood. (laughs) <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I imagine uh, I imagine make an interesting story. You know, people have asked us about that, but we, we haven't quite gotten there yet. But uh, definitely, there were a lot of adventures, and uh, and for the kids, you know, they all they all grew up. They're all fluent in uh, in the Creole, which is the native language there, as well as French. Um, and then uh, some of my kids take Spanish too. So they're you know they're multilingual. And I you know I struggle with English, so you know I, I'm I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to keep up with them, but uh, yeah, it's a quite an adventure. Of course, my 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 boys, you know, their their major game is football. You know, not uh, not American football, but uh, you know, soccer, and uh, they they love that more than anything. Although my I, my Haitian son uh, Kenson, he he came out and uh, to America. Uh, never played American football in his life, and uh, 
got on a team and uh, first year out here made MVP, you know, wide nice. receiver. The kid is fast. He's got hands like glue. I mean, he's just amazing. So, uh, yeah. So, and then, uh, you know, all my kids are just totally into sports here. So you know, here I thought I was going to come back and re- relax. And you know, I, now I'm back like, uh, you know, I was like <laughs> 20 years ago, running to soccer games, track meets, you know, uh, everything. It's uh, crazy. Basketball, you name it. That the reason why I ask is I, I like to see how kids grow up in other countries because my only complaint with my children is that they're a little they're a little I won't say spoiled but we have everything here we're, we're shopping yesterday for couches and they're like this is not comfortable I'm like guys we at least have the ability not to sit on the floor we have a TV we have internet my mom was in Italy over the week they don't even have internet service in most parts of Italy my my kids would die without internet service so um, it must have been a real sh- just change for your children to move there and I guess once you're there you, you just become really grateful for what you have when you come back over here so um it's just it's just amazing how you, you did that that's and your kids must have given you some pushback initially but it's got to be a lot of beauty there i mean once you're there with your family and what your your mission is there and and then you bring it back to the united states i commend you for that that is that's awesome that's really cool yeah well it's it's more home for them than than the u.s you know they really mm-hmm. think of that as uh, haiti as home so over here it's it's very different but you know they uh, they all slip right right into everything here. They're very comfortable. They've got their iPhones. They're mm-hmm. you know they're like in that world you know, um, mm-hmm. and and you know I, I kind of miss you know the simple. I mean we had we had some good things, some bad things. I mean we lived in a in a fortress. We had you know uh, you know ten foot walls and barbed wire and the twenty four hour guards and and the whole type because it was you know it was, was kind of hairy over there but um so it's kind of nice here that they can run around the streets and they can you know ride their bikes around for the day Mm -hmm. and things like that but uh uh yeah very very different very very different well so tell us about your first deal um how you got into your first deal here well the first one is the one i I mentioned about is uh, you're hopping on a plane and uh and I had studied, uh, you know, I'd, I'd read uh, about emerging markets, and I, I knew that Memphis and Atlanta were both, you know, good areas to buy, and so I felt pretty comfortable with that. What I didn't have um, initially it was funny because I was looking at real estate. I was I wanted to flip, and uh, I was thinking flipping in the Let's U.S. Let's back up. Man. Why do you want to flip? Why, what was the attraction there in the beginning? Because I think a lot of people start out there. Yeah, you know, I, I I looked at it. It looked like a, a way you could start off. You could almost like wholesale first, get some cash, buy you know a property, flip it. Uh, but I'm looking at the, you know, the amount of time involved in flipping, and I'm in Haiti. I'm not going to flip in Haiti, right. you know. <laughs> I mean, so I'm, I'm thinking, can I flip from afar, you know? And uh, it just just never really clicked, you know. And I'd already, you know, I bought into some email course, and you know, and I was like, you know, learning all of it. And I'm thinking maybe when I get back, I'll flip. But I ended up just buying, you know, buy and hold. Start off with buy and hold. And, uh, and that, and, and, uh, I, what I did is I, I heard about turnkey. So I thought, well, you know, it, that's probably a good route to go because I don't really, you know, have enough information yet to be able to do this totally by myself. And, uh, I learned, uh, a big lesson, you know, that uh, turnkey was not, um, all it's cracked up to be at least the way I did it in the company I went with, uh, just turned out to be really kind of a bad scene. And, uh, and you know, I learned through that process, but, um, it, uh, you know, that was sort of my first big, uh, fupa, you know, is, is not really having, uh, you know, re- looked at the properties, looked at the areas, uh, checked out the, the property management. I think if anybody's going to do turnkey, you should do it just like you're buying it with no turnkey. You know, you should do inspections on your properties. You need to, uh, vet the property managers. You've got to do all the so same stuff. So don't do stuff. turnkey, just buy it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. You know, I, I went into it thinking, oh, yeah, they, they got everything taken care of. You know, yeah, they they had it taken care of. Right? Oh. I mean, there was like and I had residents living in there that, you know, had just moved in, you know, prior to me, you know, buying this property. And they just disappeared shortly after, you know, I signed the lease and uh, or signed all the papers. And uh, so it was, uh, you know, there were a lot of a lot of things I learned uh, kind of the hard way there. Well, that's good. You started small, though, right? I mean, you started small. Um, you didn't do your proper due diligence because that's my biggest mistake is I never did my due diligence initially. And what better way to learn to jump in and to learn? That's the definition of an entrepreneur because if you never started that way and the first one went right, you might have bought five or six of these and then all of a sudden you're in big trouble. So, yeah. out of me, so right? Exactly. It's, a, it's a great learning lesson. How, how, long ago, how, many, how long ago did you buy your first property? How many years ago? Uh, was that? Uh, 20, 2014, around April 2014. 
And then when did you move back to the U- to the states? And, and we moved June 2015 back to the states. Okay, 2015. So how has your investment strategy changed since then, since getting away from the turnkeys? Well, the uh, uh, one of the things that I bought two single family and one duplex, mm-hmm. and it didn't take me very long at all to realize that you know this duplex was I paid the same price for this duplex that I did for each single family home, yet I'm making twice as much. And, and I, I, you know, have only one, uh, one property, uh, you know, uh, a property tax statement. I have one insurance statement. I have one roof to repair. I, you know, I, I was just, just, just the economies of scale were evident even in a duplex. And so I'm going, well, why am I messing with single family? Plus I had a single family that had a vacancy for a while and I'm, you know, not earning anything on this thing. And, uh, I just, I just said, gee, you know, multi is really the way to go. And so the, uh, I, uh, shortly after that, uh, I bought another duplex uh, in Indianapolis. And, uh, and then the next uh, purchase was a 22 unit in Indianapolis. And when did the uh, origination of your podcast start? When, 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 when the light bulb go on and say, I want to share this stuff with people? Well, you know, it, it's, uh, I, I started blogging first. I started writing and, uh, and you know that you know you know how that is. I, I, you guys seem like you write a lot. I, I mean, no, that's Gino. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, it's you got it takes time. You know, and and it, it, I wasn't didn't have the time because I was really looking at properties and evaluating, doing things like this. So, so I thought, wow, I could do it all in with the podcast. And so, uh, you know, I started off with really simple things, you know, just again, to educate people, I would do a podcast on cap rates or I'd do a, a podcast on uh, turnkey <laughs> or I would do it, you know, uh, just real basic things, 10 minute little blurbs. And then I would have guests on and, um, the, you know, and the big, one of the issues I knew is that, uh, I, at that time I had set a goal for myself. I said, what I want to do is I want to double the number of units I have each year. And in six years, I will have a thousand units. And, um, you know, it sounds easy in the beginning. I started off with three. Well, that was pretty easy to, you know, to double, but then as you you know, I'm talking the number of doors. So if you, if you look at uh, you know doubling it when you start getting into the fifth and sixth year, you know that's a pretty sizable number of uh, units mm-hmm. to purchase. But but I knew that I'd get to a point. I was doing everything with my own cash to start off, and then as I started to you know leverage what I had, I realized I'm going to have to get other money in here because uh, you know it just. I, if I waited, I, I think, you know, I could probably, properties would increase in value. I could take equity out. But, you know, I'm on a time frame here. You know, us old dogs don't have a long time. So we can't do those 20-year plans like you young guys here, you know. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so you know, we, we're moving fast. And um, because of that, you know, I, I really had to look at, uh, okay, I'm going to have to go f- and seek out funding. And for some reason, I, I just I have a hard time, you know, asking family and friends. That's been, you know, one that was uh, difficult for me. And I thought, well, you know, I'm learning. I don't want to make any mistakes. If I do, gosh, you know, I don't want to alienate, alienate family and people, you, you know, you, you see you the rest of your life. Funny Christmases, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, so uh, the mentor I had at the time, you know, he basically said, you know, well, then you're going to have to go outside. And uh, he was the one, you know, because I was toying with the idea of a podcast. He goes, yeah, you know, you get a podcast, just start making contacts with other investors, bankers, you know, people that, that might get involved with, with you. And I said, well, you know, uh, let, me, let me give that a shot. And uh, sure enough, you know, it's been great. I've made some incredible contacts and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really helped me. It's, I mean, it's just been an education for me. One thing that I do that I don't know if you guys do or not, but I really take um, after the interview. I, I do the show notes myself because you know when you're interviewing, you're not really. I mean, you're kind of listening, but you're also thinking about the next question and what have you. When you do the show notes, you really got to dig, you know. And uh, sometimes they'll give references you got to check out and things. And uh, I just have been learning so much just by doing show notes that mm-hmm. um, you know I'm just getting a great education uh, just doing the podcast. So so I kind of like it's you know it's a, it's it's a service, but it's also a great education tool for me. I want to go back to something you said that I really touches me and I know why I've learned. Uh, you said, I think it's a fallacy that everyone's got to be on a 20-year plan, all you young guys. I think we've been ingrained in that. Put your money in uh, stocks, wait 20 years, buy and hold. 
with real estate, I thought that when we first started, but within three years, we have almost 700 units and I'm a lot older than Jake, 10 years older. So I don't think with real estate, you have to be on the 20 year plan. You can be on whatever plan you want to be. We haven't really raised any private money yet, but now this is our goal this year to raise private money and start doing syndications. So I think real estate gives you the luxury to, you want to buy 10 units a year, you want to buy a thousand units a year. You can do either one as long as you educate yourself. So, um, I'm out here to tell people you don't have to be on the 10 year plan. You can be on whatever plan you want to be and however comfortable you feel. Don't you think, Jake? Feed the beast, baby. Give me some deals. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, look, it's, it's, me and Jake were pretty conservative. We've all been refining our money, putting our money back into deals. And like you said, you start running out of money and you want to keep doing deals. And it's like, okay, where am I going to get the money now? So you just step outside of yourself and see what everyone else is doing, what other guys who are successful doing. And you can end up doing that. So I, I, I agree. I'm, we're on the old man's plan also. We, we, we want to get to <laughs> Now, we're, we're on the Feed the Beast plan. Let's do it. Come on, man. <laughs> you know? But, you know, it's so true. And, and what's funny about it, too, is, you know, again, kind of going to the podcast idea is like, of course, right now I'm looking for, you know, looking like you guys. You know, we're looking ahead private money, whatever. So I'm doing shows on, on you know, private money. I'm doing it on sponsorships. Uh, I'm doing it on, you know, uh, uh, syndication. All these things things that I'm going to have to do at some mm-hmm. point. So, so it's, it's been, again, I'm educating myself while I'm educating, you know, my listeners. So it's, it's a real neat, uh, you know, I, I don't know, a neat vehicle for, for, uh, growing and, and learning as you go along. But, uh, that's a, that's a really good point. You can do it really fast. And, uh, I, I interviewed one guy, uh, I don't know if you know Mike Becker, but, uh, he, he's, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, it's, they have a podcast called, uh, oh, it's another old one. Let's see, it's Old uh, Capital uh, out of uh, Texas. And uh, a mortgage banker, and then he went, is he, he, with, he was watching. Is he with Carlos Flores? I don't think so. No, his, his partner is Paul Peebles. Okay. Um, but uh, in, anyway, it's really neat. They, they, um, they, he was a mortgage banker, and he's watching all these investors come into Texas and make a killing. And he's going, he goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for this. So in three years, he's, he's racked up 3,000 units. And he's got, wow. and he's, he has this, I mean, just like gangbusters. And I'm, I'm going, man, that's crazy. But yeah, it's, it can be done. And uh, he had an advantage. He he knew that the financing side so well, and he knew due diligence real well from underwriting all those years. So he just went in and just, and he knew Dallas, and he's a, he's in the Dallas area, uh, but he's all over Texas now, and I think in other states. That too, Dallas but, market is just like the multifamily oh zone. It's like everybody. <laughs> I, I love that North Dallas area. Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm looking, but everything's so competitive in that area. Yeah, that's dude. what I'm saying. Everyone's doing deals in Dallas. It seems like I don't know what it is, man. Where are you looking right now, Bill? Where are the areas you're looking? Yeah, well, I'm, obviously the ones that I'm still in, Memphis, Atlanta, Indianapolis, uh, but yeah, I am looking in Texas, but uh, yeah, also San Antonio, uh, down south. Houston, I'm not really convinced on yet, but but there's a lot of uh, sub-markets in, in Texas that are also really good that haven't, Waco, places like that that haven't been tapped into that, that have some real good potential. Um, I'm looking at the Carolinas. Uh, you guys probably know a lot more about that, but uh, um, there's, uh, you know, Still, some some good things going on there. Um, the Alabama uh, has a has some neat stuff going on down there, Huntsville area and so forth. Um, uh, yeah, so those are those are sort of the main. I've, I've looked at Ohio. Keep looking at Ohio. It's funny because uh, um, I uh, you know uh, the Cleveland area. Cleveland is kind of scary to me on one hand. There's this East Cleveland area that yes. <laughs> that isn't really a city, and uh, mm-hmm. you know it sounds like a. Uh, you know, some like, you know, a post a cop, a pop, apocalyptic movie, you know, or, or, you know, there's no cops there or anything, you know, it's just, you just kind of walk in with a, you know, with an AK and just uh, you know, <laughs> find real estate. So it's like Memphis. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're not too far off on that, but uh, yeah. So it's there's uh, Ohio's, you know, still I think got some great stuff going on. Well, Ohio's weird because Cleveland is the east and the west, so the east side is a little bit rougher, section eight, and the west side is um, a little bit better. The numbers are about the same per door. The west is much more expensive, but the rents are, are almost comparable. And what I don't understand about the Rust Belt stuff can be built new, and it still looks old. Like Cleveland's an old city, and, and they're developing downtown into thousands of units. All these A properties are coming in, but I don't see where the jobs are coming in. I'm hoping Trump can come in and leverage it and 
build the jobs up there because they're going to have a lot of vacant units if they don't do that because all these cities are building up their downtown and that's where all the money's going but the periphery of the city i hope we have this master plan for these cities to come back because it's going to be tough you're building up the the inner of the city and there's still outskirts of the city that'll be tough so you have to be careful when you're um when you're analyzing these these cities you know yeah, that's that to me is so key. You guys uh, seem like you, you do a really good job at that too. That, you know, being able to really analyze the emerging markets well. Um, that's uh, that's what I like about Indy. I think Indy has got some neat stuff happening, and you know, the fact that Mike Pence is you know from there yeah. uh, and, and stuff going on with Carrier and others. I mean, there's there's some neat neat things happening. Pennsylvania has probably got to be a pretty good place too. I would think uh, with uh, some of the the neat things they're talking about doing there with U.S. Steel and so forth. Have you thought about uh, partnerships, Bill? Getting yes. Partners or- yeah, definitely uh, have been looking at the you know partnerships and um, and uh, that you know that's one of that's one of my podcasts coming up on JVs, uh, joint ventures and so forth. Uh, but I you know haven't done it yet. I'm just I'm looking at all the options and trying. You know I think it right now I'm looking at a hundred plus is my next. Uh, next purchase uh, d- during 2017. So um, with that, I'm I'm you know I'm very uh, you know concerned. I jumping right into um, you know uh, getting syndication at this point. You know I'm not I'm not 100 percent comfortable with you know ho- dealing with a whole bunch of investors. That's why I, I would ra- feel more comfortable with a JV maybe you know going into that with somebody that really knows uh, apartment you know. Uh, uh, everything has to do with apartments and so forth, but uh, uh, and then from there maybe go into you know the uh, syndication because it'd be easier just to kind of deal with one person as opposed to you know ten, twenty, thirty, whatever it may be on your syndication. Just pick the guy who thinks like you, has the same goals as you do, and is willing to work hard as you do because that's what I think has uh, made Jake and I successful. Um, you know, and, and you're a family guy, so just pick someone who thinks that what he's doing he's doing it for your family because every time i do something i always think of the repercussions that's going to happen in jake's family because we're feeding each other so uh yeah. that'll hold you that'll hold you to a higher standard and hold him to a higher standard because i always say to jake we're willing to do more for our friends than we are for ourselves um which is really weird you know what i mean sometimes Interesting. so i love partnerships i think partnerships are great i've had a bad one i've had a lot of good ones um i think that's a great way for you to start uh just go out there put your name out there i mean you've got a great podcast get that name out there and I wish you luck with that, you know. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be Italian too, you know. That's the only thing, you know. It's just it's, it's hard to find. <laughs> Polish shrinking right now. <laughs> What's your? Uh, I want to know what is your best tip for real estate for the listeners. Well, you know, I I think um, for for me, you know, I learned a lot because I I didn't do anything of what I did. You know what what my that my tip is here. My tip is really, you know, there's, there's four things that you really need to do. Um, if you're going to go into uh, in real estate, you know, education is key. Education I see is two phased. Okay. There's the, the pre investment in education that you do. And that's the books, that's the seminars, the boot camps, and, and all that. And then you have the post investment education, which I think is really the best education. Uh, we just, you know, talked about that after you buy something is really when I think the learn, the real, that's when you start, start learning right there by doing right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, the other one is a mentor, get yourself a good mentor. Um, which is something I didn't do starting off. And, uh, um, I really wish I would have because I did a lot of stupid things that uh, would have been prevented if I had a, a mentor that had been there and done that. Um, then the, uh, the the next is a plan. I think you know some people get overwhelmed. Oh man, a plan! Now, I'm not t- talking about a, a full on, full fledged business plan with executive summary and all that. Now I'm just talking about getting your basic mission, your vision, uh, your goals, your strategy. You know, timeline. Real basic plan. I don't care if you have your know, one sheet per page, you know, but but get a plan so you got something to work off of in a direction to go. I mean, I was like I said, I was looking at, I, uh, you know, going into flipping and wholesaling and and notes and deeds and all. I mean, I was just kind of you know, I was every shiny object that came my way. I was just looking at going, oh, that looks good, that looks good, you know. And if I would have just really stayed focused from the beginning, I think I would have been you know avoided a lot of the hassles. What's- and then finally. Oh, go ahead. Oh, there's, there's another one. Go ahead. I'm just interested oh, yeah. in this. Go ahead. And, and then just the, I, I guess the final one would really be more, um, uh, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, being 
Um, I have to, to try to think. What is the fourth one? Let me let me see. I probably had it written down here somewhere. I have four. You had pre-education, post-education, getting a mentor, and then having a plan. Yeah, getting a plan, and then the the last one I had. Okay, I don't remember. Let me see. I'm an old dog here. You I'll speak. Give me- I'll speak <laughs> and let it let you generate here because what I was what okay. I was wanted to say was I think the pre-education, the getting a mentor, and the plan for me, I think that all actually comes before the post education. If you can I think if you can get a plan down, say this is the market I want to do while you're working with a mentor and that's and that's when that pre education is taking place. If you get those three knocked out and then you start working on a deal and you get your deal done, I think it's gonna put you really set you up for success. I think we're on the same page. I just think the timeline a little bit No, you're you're totally right. Yeah. yeah. It, you have to do the plan, I believe, with a mentor. If, you yeah. know, that's got that's gotta be developed with somebody that has the educate. The final one was take action. Um that's the hardest and that, and part. And that really rolls into that that post education uh stuff because you're 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 right. taking action, you're doing it. So it's it's very interesting. It's it's great stuff. I'm 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 totally on board with you there. Yeah. Yeah, that's so that's that's what I would recommend. I just think that uh, a lot of guys out there are afraid to spend some money on coaching or mentoring because they because they've heard of the horror stories. But I can speak to it. I we Jake and I did our really first big deal, and I had a I was in a coaching training program at the time, and it was amazing the stuff that came up that I would ask the mentor and say, hey, listen, what do we do here? And he guided us and he helped us out. And the learning curve was amazing. The amount of stuff, the documents we had, the letter of intents we got, all this stuff came up at the opportune time. So I think it's great to go free, get your free stuff with bigger pockets and your books and your, you know, tapes and all. And then don't be afraid to spend the money on a seminar. What's a thousand bucks? At the end of the day, you go to one of these boot camps and you meet people who are in the same market as you are, the same business as you are. You get a little bit of that motivation and then go out there and don't be afraid once you start looking at deals to to get somebody to mentor you, to tell you, hey, listen, what's going on? Obviously, you want to get somebody who's doing it, who's in the market right now, who's buying the stuff right now, but who can help you out? Because uh, on our first big deal, <clears throat> that was a sa- that was a game saver for us. Remember that, Jake? I mean, well, every time there's Jake- nothing like having it on demand, right? Yo, yeah, yeah, right, oh, right. mm-hmm. yeah. It really helps us out. So, um, I I think it's I totally agree with the education. Totally. It, yeah, the mentor part of it is, uh, I, I would say, is really key, and and it's difficult to know if the person's going to be a good mentor or not. You know, I, I think the ideal mentor is somebody who will literally walk you through that first deal, all the way through that first deal. Um, so you know, they're participating in, in from, you know, as you're assessing financing, as you're looking at all your options, you're look. I mean, every aspect. That, that's a Great. There's all types of mentors out there, and there and there's horror stories, as I'm sure you guys have heard too, from people that you guys work with. You guys have a great program, by the way, and I and I recommend it highly uh, to, to anybody who is looking for a good mentor because I know you guys really take the time to work with your people, and and uh, and that's what you need. You need somebody who really will give you the time to be able to do it right. Um, you know, not just you know a lot of promises. You pay your you know twenty thousand, forty thousand, whatever it is, that's and the then. Other thing. Uh, a lot of these things are, are, you know, expensive. But I mean, you you start getting into the game and you get a few deals done. I mean, it's going to pay dividends, you know. Oh yeah, it definitely pays off. You know, if you've got the right the right uh, mentor yeah. for sure. But I think even if you have a mentor just for a couple months, like I'm going through deals with students, and all it is is the same kind of deal cut up different ways. So if you can learn the process from the beginning to the end, the negotiating part of it, the due diligence part of it, um, the the financing part of it, and then obviously when you take it over, you might need some management uh, help with it. But if it's a three to six month period, if you're getting your first deal, I think that's the time when you want to call them up and say, hey, listen, I need help. Can you help me out here? And as you're going through the entire process, just take notes and just keep mental pictures of what's going on because it's funny. It repeats itself. And then by that time, you learn how to have the team. You'll have your team built. Your mentor will help you build your team so then the next deal the second deal becomes easier you still feel like throwing up jake we still feel like throwing up every time we do a deal but that feeling doesn't go not, away no, it, but- it, it, not nearly as much as after like the third or fourth one you know the third yes. the third one kind of reached its uh you know <laughs> height and then it, it got uh-huh. a little easier you know it, get, it does get easier because it becomes repetitive. So I really think that if you really want to get into this thing seriously, um, and you're always just investing in yourself. So that's what I think people forget. You're putting the money, and you'll never lose that money because it always goes into yourself. You're always investing in yourself. So that's what I think. Good, good point. Very good point. So so what do you say your best habit for success is? What do you do on a daily basis that, that makes you, you uh, the, the super dog? 
Well, the I super dog, the old dog, <laughs> super dog. <laughs> the, I, I, I've had a habit since I was real young. I, you know, I, I started businesses and I've worked on the corporate side and done a lot of things. And, and, uh, I've always been a, a, a real early riser. And, um, oh, there's that early is, riser again, Gina, we're gonna have to start getting you out yeah. of bed, man. Get that crowbar, uh, baby. Come uh, on. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, bro. <laughs> but, you know, I go, I, I go to bed early too. It's nice. That's hard, especially with kids, you know, and stuff. And by the time you get them to, you know, to bed, you know, you're like, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I get up at like three or four in the morning, every morning and, uh, I do my best work. Before so what time is in o'clock. California right now? It's six thirty nine right now. Wow. See, I was like, man, it's early for him. No, no. Oh yeah. He's three I'm hours half done it. with my day. <laughs> 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 Ready to take my nap, you know? <laughs> What uh, so you've been educating yourself? What is the um, the best book that you've ever read on business that you say you know I want to recommend this to get people because it really helped? It doesn't have necessarily real estate, but what, what's your favorite business book? Um, there's God, there's there's so many great books, and uh, it's it's hard. I uh, you know I'm a student of the Bible. I think some of the best business is actually in the Bible, and uh, I you know not only you know is there self development and things of that nature, but there's you know Jesus talked more about the about finance than almost anything else. So there's some like great stuff and, and I, and I still always draw from there. Um, I love, uh, you know, books like good to great, uh, you know, the e-myth and, and books like that, that are just, you know, also have some you know, great, great stuff in them too. Um, best deal so far and why? Best deal is a, a little deal. It was just a, a duplex after I had uh, you know bought in those three places. I, I checked out Indianapolis. It looked really sweet, so I ended up buying a, a little duplex there. Um, bought it for about fifty thousand. Um, That's a good price per was, door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not too bad. And uh, it was uh, pulling in at that time uh, thirteen hundred uh, or six fifty. Give aside. me some of that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's it was appraised uh, a year after I bought it for eighty eighty thousand, um, and uh, it's you know it increased the rents. It's it's just uh, it's it's doing well. It just and, and it's in a real it's in that hot downtown area of Indianapolis too. You know it's uh, it's Bates Hendricks, which is near Fountain uh, Fountain. Uh, I don't know, found something. And it's uh, it's just, a, yeah, it's a good, real good area. So uh, that was a, a sweet one. I, I, I bought a 22 unit there too, which I also say, I, you know, I, I see that becoming uh, a, the best deal uh, it's in a short period of time. Um, you know, I've only had it to not even a year, um, upgraded it, uh, you know, increased rents, um, did a lot of nice uh just you know, basic uh, uh, exterior and some common area upgrades, as well as each unit as it became available, um, and uh, it was. It just I went into it already. Uh, it was a, a inexpensive. It was uh, listed at four hundred thousand. Uh, I negotiated down to three fifty, um, and uh, you know it, it was appraised at four hundred. So you know I came in at a at a good you know under market. Uh, price and um it's in the path of progress between two very emerging uh, areas a whole redevelopment effort on one side and the other side there's a sort of a real hip what i call the hipster hoosiers hangout you know and and uh, and uh you know just uh where you got a lot of mil- millennials and so forth and it's expanding toward where this property is located so so i see good things happening i i'm hoping to double the value in three to five years of that that's uh, great that's yeah. awesome i'm hearing a lot of this gino a lot of buy and write right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. No, seriously, you're getting you're getting these things. That it sounds like the per unit price seems pretty good. So it's it's so important going in on the front end, especially in in the environment that we're in now, because everything has gotten so competitive, and it's it's really hard to find a deal. So it sounds like you're being patient and you're you're picking things up at the right price, and that, that's that's so huge. Uh, I can't I can't you know say enough about that. But, yeah, and I think in the economic times we're in too. You know, it, depending on. Whether you think there's a you know a big fall coming or some you know tough times ahead, you know if you're buying under market yep. and, and there is some sort of a crash like a 2007, um, you're, you're still going to be yeah you're right you're going to be in a, a better place. <clears throat> liking it, liking it. What are you excited about right now? Any any big projects uh, coming down 
Um, no, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to pick the market right now. I'm, I'm really excited about where am I going to find this hundred, you know, hundred plus. And, uh, so I'm l- looking at all the markets. I'm, I'm doing my emerging market analysis, trying to see what's, uh, you know, what's hot and, uh, where to really pour my time. So I'm, I'm talking to a lot of different brokers. Uh, it's, it's, it's really exciting because it's a big jump from 22 to hundred uh, plus. And so I'm, uh, I'm just looking at everything. I'm also, kind of excited about you know finding the funding you know the the private money the the partner whatever it may be so i'm really learning that and networking a lot so uh so yeah that's that's what's got me excited for 2017 it's a huge inflection point because i remember we went from 25 to 36 to 136 and you know when we were you know operating in that 50 unit zone it was great and everything but it something definitely changed when when we picked up that 136 unit property and uh and from there, it really accelerated. So, man, the sooner you can get it, you know, jump on it. I'm, I'm really excited for you. It's going to be great. So. Uh, awesome. I'm waiting for the book, though. Bill, when you write the book about your memoirs when you went down to Haiti, I'll be the first parent to buy it because that's something that us parents need to hear about something positive and upl- uplifting, a story like that where you just pick up and you have faith to go down there. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't have faith to go down to the shelter uh, down the street where they live and uh, – you picked up your life and just moved the whole family. So, I mean, that that's inspirational to me. So, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I met you through that. I'm glad that we did the podcast together, the first one. I'm glad we can reconnect here. Um, you know, more people need to hear the story because I think it's a really powerful story. Uh, well, that's that's great. It's uh, one thing that's really neat uh, that we saw a lot there was uh, people would come. In fact, there's this lady that we know that her her husband is a uh, he, he he created a, an exotic car. He's a, just a, a, a you know a real talented guy from France, and and uh, she had two granddaughters that were just over the top that was, she was having a tough tough time with. I mean, just you know spoiled and just you know bratty, and you know they were about seventeen, sixteen or seventeen, and she brought them to Haiti, and. Uh, the the just the one week trip had such an impact on these two young ladies, mm-hmm. they're twins, and uh, one of them wanted to wanted to live there. She goes, I want to I want to be a missionary. I want to live here. You know, just totally transform. I mean, you know, from you know just you know complaining because she didn't get the right color latest iPhone or whatever it was. You know, to just um, mm-hmm. I saw these kids in our, our feeding program that we have holding the kids and and feeding them and you know just weeping the whole time. Just these just the impact that it has had on people just in a week time, you know, a week's period. Um, it is a, it is very powerful and it does, mm-hmm. I think with a lot of kids, it kind of brings them home when they're, you know, all upset because they didn't get the, you know, the latest pair of Nikes that they, you know, and, and that's, a lot that's cheaper than boot camp too. <laughs> right? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> It so is. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm excited about right now. I think that hopefully there's going to be somebody out there listening to this show. And, and I'm telling you right now because we're in the business, Bill is buying these things right. So hopefully if there's someone out there listening right now that can be, you know, maybe that funding source, partner up with you, give them a call. And, and you know, there's a lot of ways. I know you're out there, but what's, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you and, um, and, you know, the websites and everything you got going on? You want to share that with us? Sure. Yeah. The, uh, uh, you know, main website for our, our blog and so forth is called old dogs, REI network and dogs is spelled D A W G. Yeah. Yeah. Not I'm like talking Snoop, dog. Not, that is Snoop Dogg. D A W G. D A W G. D O double G. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, old dogs, REI for real estate investing network.com. And, uh, yeah, you can go there and get my contact info is there. They can write to me, call me. I'm really accessible. So I, you know, most people can get a hold of me anytime, send me an email. I always write back and, um, and be happy to, happy to talk to anybody that, you know, wants to, wants to drum, visit. Drum up some, bi- some business, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, this next step, like you said, this is a, a big one. You know, I thought you guys had some private money, but this is, you haven't done it yet. Wow. I am like blown away. No, you, know, you guys it's, have, it's a miracle guys have a lot we can of even like, listen, it's a miracle that Gino and I can get on the computer. Right. First of all, turn it on, and then we're on a podcast. You know, I don't think we're sophisticated enough yet to figure out how to raise the private money. So, you know, we're just kind of just boots on the ground, grinding it out, and we refi and roll. That's been our thing. We get in, get the values up, refi the money out, roll into the next one, do the same thing. And um, you know, it's it's probably. I'm sure there's a lot of easier ways to do it, but it's been a very conservative approach. It's been a very, you know, um, financially rewarding approach. It's just we haven't. 
Yeah, we 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 have, you know we're, we we have our own management company. We have 16 employees, and you know we're busy enough making sure we're taking care of tenants and and doing the right thing. So you know pulling in investors it just adds another um, layer of complexity to it. We're, but we're not we're not opposed to it. It's just we want to make sure that we're building. You know we have we have internal HR. We have really good systems in place. We're building the thing. You know, like uh, the, the the Tennessee coach says, brick by brick by brick right we're building from the ground up and we want a very firm foundation in place so it's um it may, maybe it's a little old school but we're enjoying it you know well it's it's great you guys i i look at you guys and i'm just going wow this is they're doing it the right way and uh uh very very impressed i don't know about and, right we're doing it the hard way right now right you know uh, <laughs> I, you, you guys are doing great and i it, and mm. you know you, you offer so much too i i don't even know how you can have the time to do the education part but you do quality stuff this no, is no, but, I that's, mean, but that's i why love systems, what you're doing we're putting you know and then we follow the eos model we're putting good systems in place so that you know people are you know held accountable and doing doing what they're supposed to be doing so and you know it's just uh I, i'm implementing the uh, bill manicero trick i'm getting up earlier this year so I've, i'm starting to get up at six every day and just you go. You know, hitting it in the home office so i gotta get <laughs> i gotta get mr g biz on that here in a second <laughs> not yet bro i got i go to bed go to bed no lead no early. i can't go to bed before 11 30 it's uh, you know the kids are bed at 10 30 i have to spend an hour with the wife i want to do a little reading at nighttime before i go to bed put some positive thoughts in my mind hey tony so robbins that sounds like a limiting yeah. belief to me <laughs> you know you're right. I just I just can't, bro. And then I got uh, it's just it's tough for me right now. It is really got a two year old in bed kicking me. I'm sleeping. Oh, man. Get up in the middle of the night. It's like, dude, come on. I need to get up in the morning. And you know, I mean, and it's just my, too it's familiar. Just, yeah, it's just that phase of my life, and I know I know I'll tackle it. But as far as the education goes, Bill, I totally agree with you. I, I'm not that smart. I I have to do a lot of reading, and when I read and I listen to podcasts, I take notes, and that's how you learn, you do, and you teach. That's what I think we're all put on this planet for. We have to learn how to do something, and then we we do it ourselves. And that's just I guess it's the for, this foundation is parenthood. When we're parents, we go through life, and then we just do things, and then we have to teach these things and pass these on to our children. And that's what I love about real estate. I mean, what we're doing right now is so cool because there's a lot of people who are, who are in it who don't think they can do it but i just want them to take a look at me and jake and you we're just normal guys that just like jake says i don't like the word grind it out but we're doing it every day and we're stumbling i and enjoy the grind though it's not a bad grind you know, no, it's, no, I, you know I, I love working yeah. and working out if i didn't have work i'd be lost i mean what the heck would i but be you're doing? passionate about it yeah. that's what i want people to, i want people to think of real estate as a passion it's not just brick and mortar but think of it as a business when you're sending when you're building your own business you're building your own little foundation your own little cash centers where you're growing your wealth and if you take a look at it that way and just the way you look at it i think you can really start to enjoy it. and once you're passionate about something those little stumbling blocks are going to come through in life and you just you figure it out but if you hate something that stumbling that first stumbling block is just gonna be like boom i'm out of here it's just like you built you went to haiti i mean if you weren't passionate about it, the first malaria, you were out of there, right? But mm-hmm. it's something that really drove you, something that you were passionate about, and you fought through it, and you enjoyed it. And that's what I think uh, people have to do with real estate. They just have to look at it and say, this is why I'm getting into it. I have to have enough reasons why, and I'll figure out the reason how. It's that's not, great. Uh, and it's not Haiti, but the podcast is nice because uh, there's so many people that have benefited from it, and it's free It's free information. We're, we're able to give something back that we enjoy doing. You know, it's like we're not, we're not down there helping kids in Haiti and doing something, you know, really – like what Bill did, but it's it's nice, you know. Any way that but you you're give giving back, back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can see the sun coming you know? up in the background behind Bill. He's not messing around. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, this has been awesome. If you found value in today's uh, podcast, please get on iTunes, give us a like, give us a review, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll do this one again in the future, Bill. Oh, Gina's check got something. Out, Hold on. No, I said check out Bill's check out Bill's podcast too. He's got a great podcast. So jump on his podcast, listen to his podcast, and leave him a review also. Please. Oh, hey, it's Christmas. Hey, maybe time. we could all meet up at this everything. nice little Italian restaurant in New York. Uh, is it called Gino's, right? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll get a glass of Chianti together, you guys. We could sit around, talk about the old days, you know. <laughs> <laughs> <That'd be> great. <laughs> all right, guys. All right. Appreciate everything. Great see we'll see you. Bye, guys. We trust that you enjoy the Wheelbarrow Profits podcast. Visit jakeandgino.com, your one stop shop for everything multifamily. See you next time when Jake and Gino share more of their investing secrets with you.